Okay, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about energy pie charts. Um, let's see. What exactly is an energy pie chart? Well, let's look back at and rem remember that we talked about kinetic energy, we talked about gravitational energy, and we talked about elastic energy. Remember, elastic and gravitational are both stored types of energy, and kinetic is energy that has to do with movement or motion. So if we take a look at our little picture down here, uh, what, what I've drawn here for you is a cart on a ramp. It's a certain height here above, you know, what floor height or table height, whatever this is. And I have three locations, an A, a B, and a C location. What what I'm asking for, what I would like for you to try to do, is think about what kinds of energy this little car has at the specific times that I'm looking at. So the A, the B, or I should say locations, A, B, and C. So I'll put circles down here that will be the pies that we're representing. And those circles then, oh boy, that one's not closed up here. <laughs> oh, I guess, oh geez, that's terrible. That's awful. That's gonna have to be good enough. So I have my three different pies that are gonna rep my, represent my three different locations. I've got, a, again, an A and a B and a C. As you look at the car, at location A, and as you look at our three kinds of energy that we talked about, kinetic, gravitational, and elastic, the question would be, okay, what does, it, what does the car have here? What kind of energy or energies do you think the car has? Is it just one of these that it has? Does it have more than one type? So in other words, is it moving? Does it have kinetic energy? Is it moving? Well, it's being released from rest at the top. So no, it's not moving because it's starting from rest. Does it have gravitational energy here at point A? In other words, does it have a height above the ground? And obviously the answer to that would be yes. At height or at position A, there is a height above the ground and that means it does have some gravitational. Is there any elastic energy that the car has at this point? Uh, I would say no there because there's no spring stretch, there's no, there's no deformation of any kind of material that's allowing the car to store energy. So if height is the only thing we have here and there's no motion and there's no elastic energy stored, then that means our pi is going to have gravitational energy. Only gravitational energy. That's all we have. So that means then what this pi is representing, all of the energy that the car has is gravitational. Now if you look at location B, it looks like it's about halfway down the ramp. Now when the car is at this place here, halfway down the ramp, what do you think the car has? Well, if we go down our list, does it, does it have kinetic energy? In other words, is it moving as it's halfway down the ramp? Let me put some motion lines on here. So it's, it's obviously moving because it's rolling down the ramp. So we do have some kinetic energy. Does it still have height above the ground? Yes, it still has height above the ground. So at this point, it also has gravitational energy because of its height. So it has motion, it has height above the ground. Does it have any elastic energy? No, nothing's been stretched or compressed or uh, bent or deformed in any way. So it does, there's no elastic, but it looks like we do have kinetic and gravitational. Now, the question becomes how much of our pi should be which kind of energy? Well, if it's half, about halfway down the ramp, so it's lost about half of its height originally, that means about half of this 
that it had at the beginning is now gone. And so what is it? Well, now it has become kinetic energy. Half of what it had in gravitational has now become kinetic. So how are we going to show that in the pie chart? Well, I would split it in half here, and I would say that, well, we still have half of the gravitational that we had at the beginning, but now half of what we had in gravitational has become kinetic. It's changed. The energy has changed. Oops, I erased something. The energy has changed from all gravitational to now some of it is kinetic. Now if you look at part C at the bottom. So now the car is finally at the bottom of the ramp here. If I can draw a car again. Now you'll notice the motion lines that I've drawn are even bigger than these, meaning it's even faster down here. At location C, is it moving? Yes. In fact, it's moving the fastest that it's been moving at the bottom of the ramp. Is there gravitational energy at the bottom? In other words, does the car have height above the ground? Well, no, the car has reached the bottom of the ramp, so it has no more height above the ground. Is there any elastic energy? No, there's still nothing stretched or compressed or bent or deformed, so there's no elastic energy. That means all of the energy that we had in the beginning, as the car came down the ramp, it was losing gravitational. It went from 100% gravitational to half and half between gravitational and kinetic to now at the bottom. We would say then that all of the energy of the car is kinetic. There's no gravitational and there's no elastic. Now, I want you to remember, I chose halfway here. I split the pie in half because point B is about halfway down the ramp. So it was halfway down and it had another halfway to go to get to, part, to location C. If it was only a third of the way down, then you might have a third of your pie that has changed from gravitational to kinetic. Or if it's three-fourths of the way down, then you would you maybe have a fourth of your pie would be one type of energy and three-fourths the other. So the amount of energy that's changed from gravitational to kinetic depends on where on the ramp the car would be. And if it's about halfway down, it's probably about halfway changed. And then by the time it's all the way down, it's all the way changed from gravitational to kinetic. So I hope that makes sense. The assignment you're going to work on has several scenarios like this where you're going to have to think in these terms, in terms of kinetic, gravitational, and elastic, and thinking about what the object may have and how the energy may change from one kind to another as the scenarios depict. So that's about all I have to say about energy pie charts. I'm sure if you're confused about this, there are other videos that could be looked up on uh, TeacherTube that might help you out as well. But hopefully that's enough to get you started.